Right. So we've got the freezer laid on its back, or the fridge, and we don't need all of this lot here. The only thing we're going to keep is the line in, the electrical line in. So I might just do a little time lapse here of removing all this gubbins in there. If you can crimp these pipes before you cut them, I'd do so, it just prevents the refrigerant escaping, which I've done. Don't want to face full of the old R600A refrigeration. motor so we're not really looking to save any of this so I'll just pull the cable off pop that there I want to be able to cut all this business off it can come away Gubbins. Get rid of as much of it as possible. And there we go. So that's that back end done. That's a lot of weight gone out of this. The um the unit. A lot of weight gone so uh, that can all be put in the rubbish pile for now we'll pick that all up later because we've got some drilling to do okie doke boys and girls you've seen the racking out and you've seen the motor off and now you're seeing the extras that we're going to be adding now apart from the mesh shelving we're going to be sticking in an STC 1000 if there's room I might mount it there if not it might just sit on top but I'd like to have it panel mounted if possible maybe into the door just like that I don't know we'll figure that out later for a heat source I'm going to be using one of these uh, 60 watt bathroom heaters so this is going to sit at the bottom and this and this alone will be controlled by the STC 1000 and then we're going to be popping pop popping popping um, a 12 volt simply because I've only got 12 volt DC fan up there and that's the hole made for that this hole here is just going to have a gauze over it I'm not actually going to put a fan on it because I don't want to be drawing too much air in but I want the air to be pulled out and this drawn in naturally and then this fan I'm probably going to mount it on the side there like like quit and that's going to be the recirculation fan so we're going to get a good recirculation of air across whatever we're drying nice source of heat and then that's going to pull the moisture out up there as soon as you reach temperature the STC turns this off as soon as it drops it turns it back on we'll have something like I don't know um, a 5 degree centigrade threshold there's going to be no cooling in this so you know if it gets quite warm in the well it's never going to get to that temperature we're going to be drying it around 60 degrees for the jerky I think and then of course um, we're going to need to power the fans I thought I brought it in with me but I don't think I have so I've got a little uh, 240 to 12 volt uh, transformer it's only like 4 amps which is plenty for this because this is 0 0.1 
0.2 and that's 0.19 so it's well within the 4 amp range of it. the converter there it is look there she is just one of those bad boys and I'm going to mount that at the back so we're going to mount everything run wires where necessary and all the wires I'm going to feed probably out the drain plug there and then we'll have all this gubbins and the mains in and everything wired to the back. We're not going to have a light in here, I don't think we're going to need one. So this is going to be surplus to requirements. It's not really in the way anyway. I might move it, I might not. I suppose it makes for easier cleaning if it's gone, but we'll see what's behind it. So uh, it's just a case of getting some wires in place then, boys. Righty ho de ho, folks. You can see from the mess that we've done a little bit of wiring. We've got an STC wired up, the cutout for it there, and we've got everything else connected. So I'm just going to stick a few zip ties on these cables just to prevent any strays. So what I've done as well is I've sent the probe, the temperature probe in through the back, through the fan hole just there. I'll show you the inside in a minute because when I've got this strapped in and uh, all the tie wraps wrapped, I'm going to actually um, mount it up there, and we'll go we'll go for a live um, a live demo, a live test run, see if she works. So first thing first, I'll just pop that down there, look, you'll see why in a minute. So I've got the lid back on. And if the lid goes into place nicely, like a good little boy. That's that side. That's that side. A couple of screws there and there. See if I can get these in without dropping them. I doubt it. They'll probably get dropped. There's one. Come on now, look, be a lady tonight. There we go. That's good enough for me. I don't really need to put these back in, but I've got them, so I will, and we'll, of course, mount the STC, STC, ecstasy, in its correct position, just like it, how's that look, not three bad, not best mounting in the world, but, you know, it's practical, right, and then we've just got to get this little fella, yeah, tidied up. I think we're going to mount him there, just to be on the safe side. We well, know it's not going anywhere. We'll stand him up. This might be easier said than done. Let's go for it. It's not too heavy now, there's no motor in the back. And there we go. There we go. The temperature probe. Will the door shut? Of course it will. Just catch it there on that freezer just a tad. And then we just need to run the plug. And in she goes. Oh my goodness. Well, we're live. A bit noisy. Need to do a few tweaks. Yeah, right, so that's catching on the wood a little bit. Needs a washer. Probably the same with that. 
but you want the fans working so turn him off here right so we just need to pull these out and adjust these fans we'll come back in a minute right then boys we're back a couple of days later and uh, we trialled the old food dehydrator and she wasn't quite getting up to temperature with that element in the bottom so what we've done not everybody might agree with this but I think it's a beast we've blocked the top all back up again too much ventilation and at the bottom I've got a 1200 watt travel hairdryer and that's wired into the circuit there and uh, this has had its thermal cutout bypassed I know you might think, oh my god! But just remember, when this thing gets to 68 degrees, it's cutting out anyway. So, it's not like we're going to be going up to 200 degrees and risking a fire. And it's going to be supervised at all times as well. So, if I just move this STC out of the way, make a bit of space, what we're going to do is get this bad boy back in position. Then we can open her up and have a look at her when she's set to run so if I plug her back in which I believe is the plug wouldn't you know that's underneath everything there we go you can hear it so obviously you don't want to leave that on overnight it's the frigging racket so uh, that's her working and using that air dryer, it really does get up to 68 degrees in no time at all. So if I can just move this out of the way for a second, boys and girls, I want to show you what we've got prepared. So I went and bought some topside, I think it was, and I used the Idle Valley Maruga Scorpion chili sauce and we've got about a kilo of, of uh, beef I doubt you can hear me very well while that's running so we'll just turn her off for a second who's that? so we've got a kilo of beef and with that kilo of beef we soaked it in our special sauce baby in our special sauce and then it's been here for 24 hours boys and girls oh friggin yes it has so what I'm gonna do is lay a bit of newspaper down on here I have to excuse the sniffling I've cut the bloody grass and uh, I've got hay fever really quite badly so yeah and I'm gonna lay all of my jerky on the racks let's get to it see that that jerk is pretty well spread out and we filled four trays with one, one and a half kilos just about of beef there's a tray spare and you can see we'll quite easily fit more trays in I could put ten trays in there I think so I'm just going to bang the probe in about the middle region about there I'm going to shut her up and we'll come back in an hour and check how it's getting on. Well, friggin' right, boys. We are, as you can see, at 61 degrees, and we're approximately four and a half hours later. So I'm gonna just turn this off for a second, and we're gonna dive in. Oh my 
goodness. I'm going to have a look at the result. Make sure I'm not knocking anything over. This is four and a half hours later. Maybe five. And as you can see, a lot of the jerky is uh, is about done. And some of these pieces were put in relatively thick as well. Now, I did make the slight mistake of not spraying the wire, but they come off all right. They come off all right. You could spray veg oil on there. But look at those guys. I mean, it's pretty good jerky if you ask me. Every single draw looks the nuts. Oh my goodness. You know, I would like to give this another hour or two just to make sure that everything is completely dehydrated. But, well, you can see, guys. I'm going to take a bite. Oh, where's the camera off? There we go. We'll bite a little bit into this. Let's try it. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Oh. That is jerky. That is friggin' jerky. Right, there we go, boys. Let's turn this bad boy off. So. Yesterday we got it up to 68 degrees for what, about five hours? Yeah. And then I left it overnight at about 34. And that has finished off the jerky quite nicely, I think. So we just have to try and get it off the trays now, Gem. So next time I do this, I'm gonna spray the trays with a little bit of oil. So bring them in, darling. Let's let's start. You take them in the house. No, we'll do it here. Yeah. There you go, gents and ladies. Now, if that's not beef jerky, then I don't know what is. Let's take it to the light. Oh my goodness! <gasps> don't Boom. drop it. Well, there we go, folks. So, if you want to see more about making dehydrators or just collecting fridges, whatever you like. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below somewhere there. You may as well leave a comment, let me know what you stink, and like the video. So there we go, boys. That's just some dehydrated jerky from Idle Valley. Friggin' right, it's good. <laughs>